This video looks at how we solve simple linear programming problems using a graphical method. It does assume some knowledge about how to formulate problems. We will look at drawing feasible regions, try and understand how the objective function for the linear programming problem produces a family of parallel lines where the gradient is always the same and then use the objective line method to optimise. We're going to look at this problem. This is a problem we looked at in the previous lesson when we looked at how to formulate linear programming problems. The teacher planning a trip with 174 pupils and 18 staff travelling on minibuses and coaches. We're looking at minimising the total cost of this trip. We formulated the problem and arrived at these constraints. 16x plus 48y has got to be greater than or equal to 192. Well that was because we had 192 people to transport and we can hold 16 in each minibus where x represents the number of minibuses and 48 seats in each coach and y represents the number of coaches. So the total number of seats in minibuses will be 16 times x and the total number of seats in coaches 48 times y. The next constraint here is how we allocate the 18 members of staff. We have to have at least two staff in each minibus and at least three staff in each coach. So we must have at least two times x and three times y. And because we only have 18 staff, we have to achieve this within the 18 staff. So it's less than or equal to 18. We can't order a negative amount of minibuses or coaches to make things cost less. So we have these fairly obvious common sense non-negativity constraints. X is greater than or equal to zero. Y is greater than or equal to zero. And then also we have this, our objective function. We quite often use C where it's a cost function and it's equal to 40x plus 160y because it costs £40 per minibus and £160 per coach. So 40 times x is the amount we spend on minibuses and 160 times y the amount we spend on coaches. We're now going to set this up as a graph. Looking at the first constraint then, We'll draw the line 16x plus 48y equals 192 first. And then from doing that, we'll look at, well, which part above or below the line is greater than or equal to 192. The easiest way to draw these sort of so many x plus so many y equals a constant type of lines is to make x0 to find where on the y-axis we intercept and to make y0 to see y on the where on the x-axis we intercept. So we can see here when x is 0, 48y is 192, so y is 4 because 4 times 48 is 192. When y is 0, 16x is 192, well 192 divided by 16 is 12, so x is 12. And then we just draw the straight line between those two points. The inequality we want is greater than or equal to 192. Well if the line doesn't go through the origin, the origin is the easiest point to check that. If we make x0 and y0, you can see that naught clearly isn't greater than or equal to 192. So the origin is in the region we don't want. 
so the region below the line where the origin lies must be the bit we don't want so we shade that out like so looking at the next constraint well again if we use the same approach we've got 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 18 x is 0 3y is equal to 18 so y must be 6 when y is 0 2x equals 18 so x must be 9 so we can draw the line like so and then for the region again use the origin well this time 0 plus 0 is less than or equal to 18 so the origin will be in the part we want so that means we shade above we shade the bit we don't want above like so okay so we can see here we're nearly there we just need to add non-negativity constraints now like so so x is greater than or equal to zero so we shade off the bit where x is less than zero and y is greater than or equal to zero and we always end up with a polygon in this instance we've got a triangle there's our feasible region the next step is to draw an objective function line and what we do to do that is we look at our objective function and we try and pick a sensible value of C to find a line we're starting with 160 well it's a good idea to have something that both numbers go into so 160 is probably the most obvious one if C is 160 then when X is 0 clearly Y would be 1 and when Y is 0 40x would be 160 so x would be 4 so we have these two points here that it passes through we draw the line and because of the nature of this line whatever this value here is will not change the gradient if you think about rearranging this we'd make it 160y equals minus 40x plus 160 if we then divide by 160 so it make it y equals mx plus c form we get the we get minus 40x over 160 in other words minus a quarter x and that's the gradient and that gradient will always be the case so for every four we go along we go down one that won't change no matter how big this number or small this number is that gradient isn't going to change so for that reason we can have any any line parallel to this line just by raising this value and what we're interested in is getting into the feasible region what we see here is the first point where we get into the feasible region that will be the point where this is the lowest the C value is the lowest and that's actually what we're after we're after keeping this as low as possible if we hit that point the C value will be slightly higher if we hit that point there the C value will be slightly higher still so when we're looking to minimize minimize a cost it's the first point in the feasible region that gives us our optimum value to find the values we can look at the two lines that intersect there well it's the two constraint equations isn't it if we solve them simultaneously as you can see here we get y equals 2 and x equals 6 that tells us that we would order six minibuses and two coaches and our total cost forty times six plus one hundred and sixty times two is five hundred and sixty pounds and that's the problem solved <laughs>